Hey, 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 guys, we just got some bad news, and I'm sure some of you have already seen it, but if you haven't, we're going to break it down in this video. J.P. Morgan Chase's CEO, Jamie Dimon, today on Monday, warned everybody, warned us investors, traders, just the people in general, that a very, very serious mix of headwinds was likely to tip both the U.S., and the global economy into a recession by the middle of next year. And the funny thing is, guys, I mean, come on, people that are the higher up CEOs, you know, a lot of these politicians, for sure, the White House, I mean, everybody is saying we're not in a recession right now. They're changing the definition, but technically we're already in a freaking recession. Two quarters of negative GDP growth, technically that's a recession. I mean, am I crazy? Why is nobody other than obviously a lot of people on YouTube who can actually speak, right? Why is nobody acknowledging the fact that we're actually in a recession right now? Everybody's acting like we're not, including Jamie Dimon. But either way, he's saying that we're going to get into a deep recession. Maybe he already knows we're, or knows we're in a recession, doesn't want to say it. I don't know. I mean, obviously he knows. He's freaking Jamie Dimon. He's not, a, he's not an idiot. But at this point, right, guys, the definition has been changed. And a lot of people are denying the fact that we're in a recession right now. But doesn't matter. He's saying that even though he's denying the fact that we're in a recession now, he's saying that these next six to nine months are going to be very, very tough. And we're going to break that down in this video. And of course, we're going to go over the stock market. We're going to break down charts, what I'm doing in the markets. So sit back, relax, stay hydrated, guys. Get your 15 stocks for Moomoo Moo in my bio link down below. All you got to do is deposit at least 100 bucks, and you could get up to 15 stocks each up to 2000 bucks. And full disclosure, that also helps out the channel. I appreciate you guys as always. And with that being said, let's talk. So among the indicators ringing alarm bells for Jamie Dimon, he cited the impact of runaway inflation. In his mind, I guess, he doesn't think inflation is coming down anytime soon. Like we got, uh, like we all saw in the Fed dot plots, they think it's going to come down. Uh, what, what was it? 2024 is going to be down a three and a half, something like that percent, maybe 4%, maybe even less by 2024. I forget exactly, but either way, Fed thinks inflation is coming down. Jamie Dimon, he does not think that. He thinks the impact of runaway inflation, interest rates going up more than expected, which is true. And the honest truth, guys, is the Federal Reserve did not act soon enough. They they were denying the fact that there was inflation. They wanted to keep rates at 0%, 025 half a percent, whatever the heck it was that, you know, they wanted to keep rates low because they knew what's gonna what was going to happen. They knew that this was going to happen. And now that they didn't raise rates earlier, right, which they should have done it. And if they did that, it would have been more gradually, you know, more gradual, right? Now they have to jam all these rate hikes down the throats of the market, uh, you know, w w which is causing this. And that is a very serious um, concern for the overall market, just the, the speed of these rates going up, how the market's going to react. We don't really know, guys. This is kind of a, a science experiment that the Fed is running right now. And it might, it might go bad. Who the heck really knows at this point? He also thinks the unknown effects of quantitative tightening, which makes sense, and Russia's war in Ukraine, these are all indicators that are ringing alarm bells for Jamie Dimon. And these are very, very serious things, according to him. And he's already saying that Europe is already in a recession. He's saying that, but I don't know why he's not saying the, U uh, the U.S. is in a recession. And, you know, I, who knows? But he thinks in, some, in, in, in his definition you know, by his definition, he thinks in six to nine months from now, U.S. is going to be in a recession based on his definition. And think about that. If we're already in a recession right now, Jamie Dimon thinks in six to nine months, we're going to be in a recession. So does that mean we're going to be in a recession for at least another year, year and a half? It's possible because think about it. If the recession in Jamie Dimon's eyes, Dimon, however the heck you say, I always say Jamie Dimon, Diamond. Remember, there's no D at the end. I'm telling myself that too. Uh, if he doesn't think the recession is coming for another six, nine months or whatever, and, and, and what, what if the recession lasts in his eyes when the recession hits? Is it not going to last six months, nine months? So if you look at all these you know, months, if he turns out to be right, we might be in a recession. If I'm making any sense right now, we might be in a recession for another year, year and a half. It's totally possible. Maybe even more than that. Maybe not more than that. Who knows? It might be. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud, guys. So 
ask for his views and get this, guys. Let's talk a little bit about the markets today. We had the S&P 500 close down three quarters of a percent. Russell down 0.6. NASDAQ down 1%. Dow down about 0.3%. So all the indexes went down. VIX went up 3.5%. So he was asked about his views for the S&P 500. What he thinks the S&P 500 could do here in the short term or midterm, you know, the next year or whatever. Diamond said that the benchmark could yet fall by another 20% or he said another easy 20% from the current levels, adding that the next 20%, which you know would be the 20% if he's right, that, that we see another drop, right? The next 20% would be much more painful than the first. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he means by that. Maybe the sell-off will be much more, um, you know, a quicker sell-off, which, okay, I could see that happening because you all know, I mean, this bear market so far, it's been pretty grueling. It's not like the COVID bear market that we saw, the COVID crash where it was a month um, and then everything V-shaped recovered. We're not seeing that now because we don't have the Fed quantitative easing. We don't have the Fed lowering rates. We have the complete opposite right now. So if we get a complete, you know, shock on CPI, you know, the jobs market stays hot, which according to the last report, unemployment rate went down to three and a half percent. If this continues, guys, we might get that drastic drop because overall, and he could be right, I mean, 480 was hit the all-time high in the beginning of this year in January. We are now down officially about 25%. So this 20% that we saw that that, that it dropped, the S&P 500, it took us about 10 months to see that, 10 months. If we go, on a, go down another 20%, I mean, is it going to take another 10 months or is it going to be uh, a situation where, you know, if flash crashes, maybe, you know, in, in a month or two, it drops another 20%. And then we're down to, uh, you know, where would that put SPY? 300? Maybe a little bit under that? 280? Dang. I mean, if if SPY does get down to 280, guys, holy freaking crap. I'm going to be buying the dip every single week. And I don't care. If you guys laugh in the comments, oh, Stas, you keep buying the dip and you're going to continue to losing, losing money in the short term, it's whatever, guys. Because long term, I understand that. And, and my belief is, my philosophy is that the U.S. will always do well long term. Sure, there's going to be bumps in the road. Right now, there's a huge bump in the road. Uh, but overall, 20, 30, 40 years from now, I think these buys that we make right now, these are going to be the ones that really count. Seriously, you know, the buys all the way in the bear market. And think about it. Wouldn't you want the bear market? I know it's treacherous. I know it's painful when we're in the bear market, which we're in right now. But wouldn't you want it to be long and drawn out? Think about it. If we go through two, three years of pain in the bear market, it sucks in the short term, but we're able to invest every week, bi-weekly, every month, however you do it, through your 401k, Roth IRA, individual brokerage account, taxable account, whatever, right? However you do it, you have more time to build out your positions. It's not like the COVID crash where... It tanked in one month, and then it rebounded, and pretty much it was a frenzy. Everybody was freaking out. Nobody knew what was happening, throwing money left and right. I mean, it's 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 drawn out right now, which I believe is is better. It's more treacherous. Uh, you know, it's it's more painful. It's more drawn out. But if you have the long term mindset, seriously, guys, and hit that like button if you do. Hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe as well. These are the times where you can really not only accumulate index funds. Like I'm doing VOO, you know VXUS. There's a couple other ones. What's the other one? Uh, VOT, which is mid cap growth. I don't even want to look at that one. That one's probably getting destroyed. But who cares? Because I'm buying more at lower levels. And in five years from now, in the next bull market, because there will be one, and, and people are arguing, oh, there's a lost decade. There's going to be a lost decade. Well, guess what? If you average down <laughs> in in a in a a decade of downside, right? What's going to happen when we rebound? Sure, we might not take the a previous high out, but you're still going to make money if you are buying the dip. Think about it here on SPY, and then we'll talk about some stocks, and I'll stop ranting. But if you guys are finding value in this, hit that like button again, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Think about this. SPY was at 157 bucks in 2000, right? We're talking 22 years ago. It went all the way down to $78. That was a drop of 50% in a couple years there, whatever it was. And then it rebounded to 155 bucks, 56 bucks by 2007. That, my friend, it's not quite a decade, but 
It's eight years. That's eight years where SPY did not do anything. That's if you bought at 155. That's if you bought at the all-time high and you didn't, assuming you didn't buy at all during the 50% crash. But if you were averaging down, right, I guarantee you, you did well. I mean, you did do well if you reinvested dividends, you held on, you bought good companies if you're buying other, you know, other things other than index funds. But let's say you were just buying SPY. If you were buying at 150, 140, 111, 90, 75, whatever, 85, and you got your average at about 90, 95 here, and then we saw the next rally, the next bull market, think about it. If you had money at 90, 95, we're not including dividends here, you would have made about 40% over the course of you know, 2000, 2001 to about uh, 2006, 2007, which over you know a couple years, that's not the best return. I mean, we're talking 7, 8%, again, not including dividends. We're doing some napkin math here, guys, but think about it. It's all about dollar cost averaging. And if, you, if you're getting caught up in the lost decade crap, I mean, it could be a lost decade. Who knows? But I'm just going to continue dollar cost averaging and, you know, being optimistic because I do believe in the future of America. Sure, there are some some crazy things going on these days uh, and globally as well. I mean, there's a lot going on, but I'm still being optimistic and I'm averaging down. What do you guys think? Again, let me know your thoughts in the comments about that. And yeah, I mean, that's really just the news that we got from Jamie Dimon, you know, the 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 CEO of JP Morgan. And funny enough, weren't we just talking about JP Morgan, I think a couple of videos ago? I was thinking, I'm gonna buy this stock pretty soon here, probably about 80, 85 bucks. And this is a stock that if it does get to 80, 85, 90, which I think that five, ten dollar window, that's a screaming buy, in my opinion, that would be a drop for JP Morgan of over 50% from all time highs. That is insane. That is intense uh, for, for J.P. Morgan. So, yeah, I mean, Jamie Dimon, he may be dodging the reality here, or he's probably just not publicly saying the fact that we are in a recession right now. Uh, but that's what he said. And, you know, that's kind of what the market had to deal with today, one of the things. And it's going to be interesting to see how these next couple of months play out with midterms, with the price of oil, with Russia-Ukraine, the Europe energy crisis right now. It's going to be crazy. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah, let's talk about some stocks here and go over some negative movers first. We had DraftKings completely and utterly collapse today, which this stock went down, if I pull it up, 14%. And you can see here we're now trading, if I clear the set and redraw it, we're now trading at the bottom of this wedge. Do you guys see it? Boom. We're now at the bottom of the wedge here. We're pretty oversold, so I'm not, uh, you know, you know, looking to dive right into this right away. But if we find some consolidation at about 1350, 14 bucks, 1420, kind of where we are now, buyers start to come in, we might be able to get a move there, uh, maybe a recovery play on DraftKings. And let me see what exactly uh, sent the stock down. I forget exactly what happened today. California prospects weekend, DraftKings shares drop amid report on cutting ads to legalize California online sports betting. So they're cutting ads to legalize California. So I guess it's not legal there for all my California peeps in the comments is sports betting legal in California. I have no freaking idea. Quite frankly, I haven't been to California since I was five years old, which I don't even remember when I was five years old. So I have no idea, um, you know, what's the deal over there, but overall that's not good news. That means they're not really getting much of an ROI, I guess, or they're not uh, making much progress on California, and that's a big state. That's a very, very big state. And, I mean, I don't know. At this point, w again, let me know in the comments. I might be completely off, but is sports is sports betting has got to be legal in California. I don't know. I should know this. I forget, to be honest, guys. But, yeah, that's a big down move for, uh, for DraftKings, down 14% on the day. Snowflake down 9% on the day, and this is slowly starting – to lose trend or to break trend, which is not good. We're under the moving averages now. We took the lows out from the end of September. That's not good. Now we're looking to go down to the lows here from the middle of August, being about 150, 55-ish. We're now at 159, down 9% on the day-to-day. -day. If that breaks, guys, which by the looks of it, again, we're slowly breaking trend, there could be a big dump on Snowflake and if I uh, clear the drawing set, do we not have a, a head and shoulders here? Do you guys see that clear as day? Let me show you all. We have the left shoulder right here, boom. We got the head right here, boom. We got the right shoulder right there. So we have a clear as day, head and shoulders, rocking and rolling here on Snowflake. And 
it might be going lower. Keep that in mind. Let's see here. Las Vegas Sands, it tricked us, guys. It tricked us. It ran up above 45 or up to 45, close to it. Broke out completely, but now we've pulled back. Today it went down 7.5%. LVS closed. I mean, the chart still looks good, so don't write this off completely, but it is now under $40 a share, which was a big resistance, and now we're back under it, so it's a resistance again. So if LVS starts breaking above 40, 41, look for that move back up to the mid-high 40s. I'm still thinking that is possible. Let's see what else moved today. NVIDIA down to 116. Might be time to, uh, maybe not yet, to buy more NVIDIA, but... We're watching it. It's now under where I initially bought it or my initial position, which I told you guys. And by the way, you get all my buys and sells, call outs, morning videos, all that good stuff on Patreon. Check it out. Link down below. I told you guys I bought NVIDIA initial position, very small nibble at about 120, 21 bucks a share. Now we're at 116. I'll be buying more if it gets down to 100, 105. Maybe lower. It probably will go lower knowing that I just bought it, you know, for a long-term investment. It's funny. When I buy some long-term, a lot of my long-term investments, guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. You buy some, you think it's going to, or it goes up a little bit, you're like, let's go, baby. But then it, <laughs> then it starts tanking again. But then again, it's for the long-term, so who gives a crap? Uh, but overall, it's, uh, it's a stock that I'm looking to buy. You guys know that. I've been mentioning that a lot. It's NVIDIA. What else here? AMC. Eh, I'm getting bored of AMC, guys, and GameStop. Uh, really, I'm, I'm getting over that crap, to be honest. Uh, but AMC went down on the day. GameStop. Uh, let's see. What's GameStop at? It went down a little bit. 25 bucks a share. These are not doing much of anything these days. Uh, but you know, once you think and count out GameStop and AMC, that is just when they come back and strike. So who knows? Maybe I'll throw uh, some gamble money. Maybe 100 shares of AMC for fun. Uh, and if it goes from 6 to 10, 12 bucks, hey, I just doubled my money. Not that bad. But it's a huge risk, guys. And GameStop's now, again, like I said, at about $25 a share, which if I pull this chart up, you can see it's about to collapse by the looks of it. This is actually a descending triangle. Look at this. We have a clear support at about 25 bucks a share, right? But we're making lower highs. Boom, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high. This is a descending triangle. I think it'll play out. And GameStop will probably start going down to about 19, 20, maybe about 21 bucks a share. And quite frankly, this might be a short. I'm not a big, uh, you know, I don't really short stocks really often at all, uh, but if I were to do that, this would be one that I'm looking at seriously right now um, if that descending triangle plays out. So let's see how long we're in here. Are we 20 minutes yet? 17 minutes. Not bad. Maybe we could do another stock or two. Uh, Meta. Oh, wow. Look at that. Meta went green today. 133 bucks a share on the close. Not bad. Almost $134. And we had Apple green as well. I think we got some news from Apple. Something about their Macs selling better than expected. Uh, I was reading that earlier. I forget exactly. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow. Here it says Apple's iPad sales could fall this year and next. Um, yeah, probably. That, that makes... Well, I don't want to say probably. Uh, but I could see that happening. It's possible. They have a lot of products, guys. I mean, think about it. If the average person has a Mac and an iPhone, are they really going to get an iPad too? I mean, the only reason why I have an iPad here, which trust me, it, it, it's useful. It's good. But the only reason why I have it and take all these notes is because I make YouTube videos and I have to film these videos <clears throat> and I have my laptop, which I film on. And then I got the iPad. So I use the iPad for notes. So I could watch and, and talk to you guys at the same time. But if I haven't, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, trust me guys, I personally would not have an iPad. And an iPad is one of those devices that, think about it. If you think about the psychology of the consumer a little bit, then we'll wrap the video up. A lot of people have their phones, which is the device that they're attached to the most. This is what they're going to be upgrading either every year or every two years, right? And the, and the laptop is probably, I'd say, every four to five years. At least that's what I would do. Maybe maybe not four to five years. Um, you know, I've had laptops for way longer than that. But these days with laptops and what I'm doing with YouTube editing, you know, doing all this stuff on TikTok, which follow me on TikTok, by the way, I kind of do need a better computer. So maybe personally, I'd upgrade mine maybe every three years, but I guess you could go four to five years. But the point I'm trying to make here is an iPad, you can buy an iPad and not buy another one for five, six years at least. I mean, people are not, I feel like, recurringly buying 
iPads every single year. Unless, again, maybe you use it pretty religiously or maybe you're a you know, graphic designer and you do a bunch of stuff on your iPad. In that case, fine. But the average person, really, um, I don't think they're upgrading their iPads as often as their phones, obviously, and even the watches, right? Watches, people upgrade those probably every year or two. Uh, the AirPods, probably every year or two iPads kind of last on the list, guys, at least in my opinion. I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I guess with that being said, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button as well. Feel free to subscribe and check out my Patreon link down below. And if you haven't gotten your 15 stocks for Moomoo yet, use that link, deposit at least 100 bucks, and you cook it up to 15 stocks each of the 2000 bucks. And don't forget to also get your 12 stocks from Webull with any amount deposited. All of those are linked down below. And with that being said, guys, cheers. Stay hydrated. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.